welcome to Rogers TV and Service Georgina. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and we have a series of shows planned to give residents information on the various departments, programs, and services that the town of Georgina offers, and hopefully give you some insight and answer some of your questions on the town um, and their operations. Um, but we hope you, if you have other questions, you can certainly get a hold of uh, those departments. Um, but the idea is to provide you with some information during these shows. And joining me today is Rob Weeder. Um, you're the uh, Director of uh, Corporate Services and the Town Treasurer, so welcome. Thank you. Now, on our previous show, we had Lawrence Arton, Head of Capital Projects, and Ken McAlpine, our Landscape Architecture, um, discussing some of the um, uh, major capital projects. And we went through the scope of, of those projects. We talked about the Merck, Civic Center, the Fire Hall, West Park, the new Sutton Park. I said in the next show we would talk about how we're going to finance all of these projects. So um, we talked about uh, the, uh, the long-range uh, plan at, during our, our, our budget discussions. Maybe tell us what is the, the plan for the funding of, for example, the, the multi-use rec center, the Merck? Yeah, so that, that's always the big question. We, we have these a lot of large projects and, uh, and you know, the question that always comes up, how are we going to finance these over the next, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, depending on the project. Um, so when it comes to the Merck, the Merck is a, a development related project. So 90% of the capital cost is funded from development charges. So development charges are, are amounts that are levied on new development and it's developers, yeah, so developers have to pay that charge. So that's not coming out of the, the tax levy so no. the capital costs are not are not being borne by by the tax levy so the there would not be an increase in the in the taxes due to the capital side of, of the Merck. That is correct. So there is the 10% the legislative amount that you can't fund from development charges for the Merck. So that equates to about $4 million. But the town, over the last few years, was very proactive in setting aside um, a certain amount every year into a reserve to ensure that we can cover that 10% that, that isn't covered from development charges. Now, what if we didn't build the Merck? We've been collecting development charges for, but what if we didn't build the, uh, the Merck? Yeah, so because we've been collecting the development charges we we should build some type of recreation facility if it wasn't the Merck we should still build a recreation facility the main reason being is as the town grows and the town is going to grow over the next 20 years um, the way development charges are calculated for recreation facilities it's based on a 10-year historic service level so you you kind of take the square footage um, per capita and and that's kind of what your service level is over the last 10 years so if we don't build the Merck what does that do to our service levels so so as our population goes up, our service level will decline, which means that's less money that we can collect from development charges in the future. So that the town council would essentially be making a decision to decrease service levels by not building a recreation okay. facility. And we would have to adjust our development charge yeah, to, so, to collect a lesser amount. Exactly. So our next uh, DC update would be in 2021. And if we weren't going to build a Merck um, or a recreation facility at that time, we would have to take a look at uh, our current service levels the last 10 years and the development charge Churches. definitely would decrease. We'll get in a bit more about the DCs a little bit later but if we um, didn't use the DCs for this, um, sorry if we're using the DCs for this and we don't collect the DCs as we think we would, how would we pay for that uh, that long-term debt? Yeah, so so at the time uh, that the Merck is complete, which would be around 2021, we would look at, uh, we would do an update to see what the development is that we're expecting over the next 20 years. And uh, that's what we would base our um, our long-term debt on. So if we think it'll take us 18 or 20 years to uh, receive those DCs, we would take a loan out over 18 or 20 years. So amortize, like you do for your, your house or mortgage, you would yeah. amortize it over that period of time. Exactly, and, and there's always the risk that uh, if you don't get the development over that 20 years, what happens to that long-term debt that you still have to right. pay? So the town would still have to pay it, but we would internally finance it from our other reserves, and we would charge interest back to the DC reserve. So as the development came in, say, in year 20 sorry year 21 and year 22 we would just repay, repay back the back development charges. charges yeah so there's a plan in place that if the DCs don't come in as we forecast mm -hmm. that we'll be able to recoup those uh, we those would costs. as well as the interest costs right. related to it so let's talk a bit more about development charges and I think a lot of people really don't understand what development charges are 
you know, what, how we calculate them, um, what we can charge for, what we can't charge for. So maybe tell us a bit about how we uh, calculate uh, the development charges. Yeah, sure. So, so every five years, the town does a, a DC update, and um, it's essentially a DC study. So to collect development charges under the DC Act, you do have to do a background study, which specifically says um, what development you have occurring, where the development is occurring, and what capital expenses you're going to incur. Sure. Uh, now, do we do that study? ourselves or do we hire a no we hire a, an outside firm to do that there there's only a couple firms that spe specialize in doing it is DC a very studies. specialized because there is so many rules and regulations in, in terms of uh, the calculations involved with uh, development charges it is and you really want to make sure the experts are doing it because if there if there is an error in, in anywhere in the DC study then then it, it can, it can be, appealed. be appealed yeah. and, and you, you are at risk of losing some of that uh, development potential. So what are things that we can um, charge back through on a development charge? Yeah, so it's really all capital related, so you can't charge back operating expenses. Right. Um, so you can uh, you can collect DCs for recreation facilities, parks, um, water and water, wastewater, roads, roads libraries. fire, library. So there's a number of areas where you can. So what can't we uh, collect development charges for? Yeah, so the two biggest ones would be your operating expenses as well as uh, new administration buildings or civic centers. Yeah, and that leads us into uh, to, to the next discussion. But before we leave that, um, DC rates are, are different across uh, York Region. Um, every municipality sets their own rates because it's based on what their population growth is, what their, their um, uh, service levels are. How do we try to balance out trying to collect as much as we can because we want to make sure that growth pays for growth, but not having our development charges too out of line with others. Yeah, so at the time of the DC study, you'd really have to look at the, the type of growth that you're going to incur, as well as a lot of other factors. You might want to look at neighboring municipalities, uh, what type of DC charges that they're charging, um, because really you want to, it depends on what your goal is at, as a municipality, but you want to stay competitive um, with the municipalities yeah. around you around. to ensure that you are attracting, uh, attracting the growth that you want, the type of growth that you want. But as um, many residents know, are concerned about is, is why am I paying more taxes uh, for, for the growth? The idea of development charges is for, for growth to pay for growth. We all know it, it, it doesn't pay for everything. Yeah, they do limit us on, on what can be collected, but it's there to assist us, especially with those major capital projects. Yeah, and, and so um, really DC is a, it's really about the capital side. And when we start looking at the operating side on new growth related projects, there is an operating expense related to those, but there's also the new assessment, the new tax right. assessment that's so coming as, in. So as people move in, they're paying taxes, which increases our assessment base, which helps to pay for the operating, the operating expenditures. Let's talk a little bit about the operating for the Merck, because I know um, that's been a, a question that people have had, how much is it going to cost to uh, to operate it? So maybe give us an idea of what we're what we're estimating at this point. Sure, so so right now the, the estimates are preliminary because it'll depend on what the final design and uh, the final services that are offered within the Merck. But um, based on the original, uh, the original design, uh, we'd be looking at for the Merck portion about $650,000. So that's a, that's a net um, expense. expense. That would be the expense to the taxpayers after um, accounting for the user fees um, related to the facility. And for the library portion, it would be around 340000 So what are we doing to try to, to minimize that, uh, that those operating costs? I know I talked earlier with uh, Lawrence about uh, partnerships, perhaps with, uh, with the YMCA or, or other, other groups. And what are we trying to do proactively with, uh, within our budget? So we, we definitely want to look at uh, private partnerships, um, because any any type of revenue that we that we can bring in that lessens the burden to the uh, to the existing taxpayer, um, that that's always what we're looking for. Um, whether or not we can operate um, at a for-profit basis on a facility like this, usually recreation facilities in they, municipalities they are always not, cost money. I they, mean, they always cost. Our pool costs us what about? Uh, it's about a, a million, million dollars. It's a million um, dollars. The ice palace, it's I think six or something yeah. in change, and the um, the Sutton Arena. The Sutton costs, yeah. Yeah. So they, they all cost money because if we charge what it truly costs us to operate, we would price it out of the market for residents to, to be able to use. And it's one of the key services that a municipality is, is supposed to offer is recreational uh, um, facilities. So there's that balancing of um, trying to cover the costs. Mm -hmm. And I know we try to look at things to, 
to do those partnerships and we're looking at uh, sponsorship opportunities as well which will feed into the whole operating uh, operating budget to try to decrease yeah so ideally what we what we want to do is once we figure out all those opportunities um, even if there is an existing cost left that that goes on the tax base it's really again the new assessment that's coming in that's paying for those additional costs it's not really the existing taxpayers, taxpayers. that are paying for that yeah and we're, we're trying to build into uh, um, a rate stabilization fund the, uh, the funds to be able to help cover the yeah, costs. Yeah, in, in the 2019 budget that was just released, you'll see that um, we've started just uh, this year to set aside $180,000. Um, that will go into a reserve, and then we'll try to ramp that up each year from now until 2021 so that when right. we open the Merck, there's not that really big, big spike. Big spike. And, and if we open it sort of mid-year, you're looking at uh, half a year's expenses. If we open it uh, yeah, towards the middle to the end of 2021, then you're looking at uh, the next year adding that the rest of the, the, the year's operation, again, yeah. spreading it out over the two tax years. But I think the key is for, for us to have that plan in place, and mm -hmm. we do certainly have that that long-range uh, financial plan that uh, and that was done when did we do that, that yeah study? so we did the long-range financial plan in 2016 so um, at that time uh, the the development ch charge study was already complete as well as the recreation facility needs study so the cost of the Merck is in the long-range financial plan um, there was an inflation factor worked into that right. um, and for the Merck and, and as as you know with the, the release of the draft budget um, the inflation uh, related to the Merck has increased a bit more right um, However, that that is uh, um, will be reflected in the long-range financial, financial plan. plan. Making those adjustments, and that's what the long-range financial plan does: is looks at what are you going to spend over the next uh, 10, 15 years, mm -hmm. and and as we get closer to when those projects, we do try to uh, um, adjust the the cost based on the dollars to build. Like when the needs this, uh, recreation needs study was done. It was done in 2014, so mm -hmm. it recommended that we look at making sure we uh, increase those um, estimates because yeah. we are just looking at, at estimates right now. So that's what we've done in this budget year to be um, as completely transparent as possible so that we know what uh, what we're looking at. Now we touched on, uh, on the Civic Center, so we're going to get into that when we come back uh, from the break. So be sure to join us. We're going to talk next about uh, the Civic Center project and how that is, is going to be funded. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk and this is Service Star Gina here on Rogers TV. Be sure to join us when we come back from our break. Welcome back to Rogers TV and Service Georgina. I'm Mayor Margaret Quirk, and with me today is Rob Weeder. He's the uh, Director of Corporate Services and Treasurer. Now, we were just starting to talk about uh, um, the Civic Center. We had the discussion about uh, the Merck and the DC charges that are, are used to, uh, to pay for the capital costs there. Um, development charges can't cover administrative uh, costs, oh, so perfect. how are we going to fund the, uh, the Civic Center? Yeah, so with the Civic Center, uh, right now the, the estimated cost is $27 million. Um, we would be uh, funding that through long-term debt. So we'd be looking at taking out a, a debenture um, through York Region um, of uh, $27 million and spreading it over likely 30 years. You, you could spread it over longer. Um, you, you just can't exceed the lifespan of the building, but right. you want to make sure you don't pay too much interest as well. So it would. right now we're looking at about over 30 years. So... One of the things that we talked about uh, with Lawrence was uh, why we didn't look at, or we did look at, uh, renovating, uh, why we're doing the, the rebuild. The costs associated with uh, renovation and maintenance and repair of this building, how does that factor into our decision to uh, to go with a new build? Yeah, it definitely plays a huge role because uh, we're, we're current, our current Civic Center is an older building. Um, however, we are a growing municipality, so we are going to outgrow this building. So whether or not we renovate this one, bring it, bring it up to the standard that it needs to be, and then do an expansion on it, the, uh, a report done by Pivotal in 2016 shows the financial analysis that over a time span of 30 years, it cost almost exactly the same as to just build a new facility that would be more efficient, more, um, accessible. more accessible, better with uh, 
operating efficiencies. Right, because as I said in the, the previous show, that this building was never designed for an office uh, structure, an office environment, mm -hmm. and certainly as a building, uh, the age of it is, it's not set up for the technology that, uh, that, that residents uh, are expecting and that uh, uh, provide a, a functional uh, workspace for, uh, for, for people here. Um, one of the big issues, obviously, is the accessibility issues mm -hmm. here in this building and the cost to uh, put a new uh, um, elevator, elevator in. Uh, yeah. We're talking a couple million there with, with yeah. all the accessibility requirements on an old building that eventually, uh, you know, there's, there's issues. I mean, we know there are uh, issues within, within this building, but um, so the cost to, to do the, the, the renovation, uh, I know, in the pivotal report, and that is on, uh, on the website. If people that really want to get into uh, the details of, of why, um, we are looking at rebuilding the, the building here on the, the Civic Center property, mm -hmm. so uh, we didn't have to go out and, and purchase land, which some municipalities uh, have, to, have to do. Um, we have enough land here. We haven't decided mm -hmm. exactly um, where the um, footprint, the footprint be, would be, but that's, uh, that's coming up. I know um, uh, Lawrence had mentioned we've got the steering committee to, to start meeting this, this month and to, to get into sort of a, the design and public mm -hmm. consultation on this as well. Now the other park we had mentioned um, is the, the new uh, Sutton Park. Maybe mm -hmm. you can tell us how we're uh, funding that one. Yeah, so the, the Sutton Park uh, is identified in our uh, DC background study. So it's not identified as a specific park, but in our DC background study, we collect DCs for parks in general, for building new parks when these new um, residential developments right. are being built. So the, the one that, uh, that started last year and, and uh, is this year is the Sutton uh, Community Park. Um, so that one there, it's uh, 90% of it is funded by DCs. Uh, the other 10% would just be funded by uh, by the town's reserves due to that. What's the estimated cost for that one? It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, 1.4 1. 4 million companies. for the construction and the de design was 150, 150,000. Right. So I know some people have felt that we put all of our DC recreation um, uh, charges into uh, the multi-use. So you're saying that no, we, we do have... Uh, no, so we, we do have uh, money available. So. The, w with a project like the Merck and, and building that, a lot of the DCs do go towards that. However, there is about another $10 million over the next 15 to 20 years that will go towards building these parks. Um, in, so you could see that we could build probably six, seven parks for, uh, for that $10 million, for that $10 million over the million next, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's good to know that we're not putting necessarily all our eggs in one, no, uh, in one basket. No. Now, when it comes to uh, to West Park, how is that uh, being funded? Because again, that's not a growth-related uh, project. Yeah, so West Park is different um, because it really is just a repair of a current current park, um, a substantial repair. Right. Um, so the the total cost uh, is about seven to eight million dollars for West Park. So again, it, it, Ken and I spoke, and yeah. it is a big price tag, but it's a big project. It's not just a, a band-aid solution. It's a a total it's a re full, rebuild. Full rebuild, and and at the time when that solution was presented uh, to council uh, a similar analysis was done to the Civic Center where you know it doesn't make sense to just do a partial rebuild right. um, but the partial rebuild maybe cost two and a half million dollars and it's only going to last ten years so when you look at the annual cost right. of that partial rebuild it, it's actually cheaper to do the full rebuild if the lifespan is going to be the 30, the 30, 30 years. years or more. Exactly, and, and certainly um, in that area, that's a, a well-utilized uh, park. Mm -hmm. um, the baseball diamonds are, are used by a lot of uh, tournament play, and uh, there's a um, concern with you know how wet it gets if mm -hmm. there's a rain and not being able to, uh, to use that park. And I know we looked at options of uh, building it at other locations, um, but as uh, uh, was discussed with, uh, with Ken McAlpine, uh, that's current um, uh, residential use and, yeah. and the others, anything we would build uh, in a new location, we would have to then uh, try to get um, more parks put in place to replace uh, the West exactly. Park and look at the, uh, the growth uh, in the area. Mm -hmm. The fire hall, now that, the fire hall project is the only one that we're currently actually in the midst of uh, construction on. How are we funding uh, the fire hall in Pefferlaw? Yeah, so the, the one, uh, the Pefferlaw fire hall, again, that's kind of repair and replacement of an existing facility, so it's not growth related, so it's not funded by DCs. So it is uh, funded uh, by long-term debt over probably about uh, 30 years. Uh, we would take that long-term debt 
um, to cover the cost. To cover the cost yeah. and stuff. Because again, it's not growth related. No. So it's a tax levy, but again, we're trying to spread those costs out. Yeah, oh, over yeah. over the lifespan of, of the building, to, the building. To make it fair so that, you know, the, the future residents that will be utilizing that facility, facility are, are essentially are also paying, paying for, for that it. facility. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that sort of wraps up sort of the, the side of the uh, the long range financial plan, but that's only one part of our, our your your um, uh, portfolio overall. in the overall budget. Mm -hmm. Maybe tell uh, us how how does the town prepare for a budget? We're, we're, we're into budget season uh, at this point. When, yeah. is, when does uh, the staff start getting into uh, into the budget and how do you do that? Yeah, so really uh, kind of all year we're, we're thinking about the budget and we're thinking about the long-range financial plan and adjusting our 10-year capital plans, but we really kind of jump into budget myself probably as early as June, um, but Lucky more you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but more for the uh, for the other managers and directors and staff. Everybody kind of has a uh, input into the budget. It's more uh, August, the beginning of August. I send everything out to everybody and uh, uh, they really start to dig through the operating budget, go line by line, mm -hmm. um, looking for trends, uh, trying to determine any type of savings that, that we can find by looking at five-year uh, historical averages. Yeah, because sometimes you may not spend the money, for example, during a winter season, you may mm -hmm. not spend uh, as much money on, on snow removal because it didn't have, mm -hmm. didn't have as much. So you don't want to cut a budget too much. No. You, you want to look at the, the yeah, trends. Yeah, you got to be careful not to cut it too much. And, yeah. and the good thing with the town is council has uh, has approved a really good surplus deficit policy. Right. So if there are any savings from uh, actuals at year end, so when we um, when we compare to budget, if there's savings, it goes right into reserves. So right. it really helps. Uh, part of it goes into our working capital reserves. Some of it goes into the repair and replacement reserves. Right. So it really helps to try and close that funding gap that we have on our uh, on our assets. And, and we know we have that that funding gap yeah. in terms of uh, what we need to be spending each year. For example, on our on our roads. So. Yeah, so we and, and we're trying to address that. And uh, one of the recommendations that was in the long range financial plan was to add that 1% um, to capital reserves every right. year. And that's kind of an additional 1% to the budget because it's like a catch up on trying right. to catch up on that. So if we, we put 1% of the uh, tax levy, the tax levy the, so this year that would be how much? $412,000. So if we don't put that in this year, because now it's, it's a it's a cumulative thing. So if yep. we don't put the one percent in this year, what is that? What's that impact in five or ten years? Yeah. So so at budget time, I, I kind of showed over a twenty-five year time span. If you don't choose to do that one percent today, it has a ten million dollar impact over twenty-five years. Over twenty-five years, yeah. it's, it's it's huge in that sense that the more you put away for for that. Um, the better yeah. in terms of putting into the reserves. We have a whole um, uh, asset management plan that, again, the province has has uh, mandated, mandated more with that. So tell yeah. me a bit about that. So, so we do have an asset management plan. Um, the last one, I believe, was in 2014, so it is due for an update. Um, as part of Regulation 588-17, uh, which just uh, has recently come yeah. out, mm -hmm. um, there, there's a number of um, milestones that the town is uh, mandated to meet. So the first one is um, just to create a new strategic asset management policy uh, by July of 2019. But then two years later, we got to make sure we update our right. um, asset management plan. and. So what do we mean by assets? What 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 it gets included with the assets? Certainly buildings, but what other things get uh, get included? Yeah, so it's all of our core assets, um, which would be your roads, your water and sewer, um, your um, it can be storm water. It's it's a lot of things. things. It's not just the, the buildings and. And you know we do have a number of uh, older buildings. We do have some newer buildings in, in town, but we do have a number of older facilities that need to be brought up to um, accessibility requirements yeah. that need to be maintained. Just like in your own home, you've got to make sure the roof is sound and that uh, you don't have uh, leaks and, and maintenance of, of uh, the property. So we have a, the building condition assessment report. And how does that tie into to the budget? How do we look at tying those two things in? Yeah, so in 2016, we completed completed uh, building condition assessments on all our facilities and uh, that was fed into the long range financial plan at the time in 2016. Right. So now every year um, we do have a backlog, um, about a $10 million backlog. Yeah. Um, so the way we have to prioritize that is the, the supervisors um, and managers will go out to the facility, look at what the building condition assessment is saying should be done and actually visually look and, and prioritize what
what is right, the, what the most on health done. and safety yeah. and what absolutely has to be done because the, there is only so much money as well as resources to be able to, to um, do, do these projects. What are we looking at in the 2019 budget for the building condition assessment? What, what sort of funds are we looking at? Yeah, so in 2019 we're looking at, at about $500,000 um, so, going towards uh, fixing just just some repairs yeah, on the facility. Sounds like a lot of money, but uh, it, it can get. It's, uh, yeah, it's not a lot when you look at the, the overall number of, of buildings. I, I don't even know the, the exact number uh, of our I assets. I think there was four. Like, I think we did forty-two. Forty-two for the VCAs. of the, the main we probably ones. have more because we didn't do all like, all the little tiny all the, ones, the smaller things. Because your assets are even entrance signs and, yeah. and things that people wouldn't think of as as an asset, but it's it's there. We need yeah. to. Um, street uh, street trees. That's an asset that needs to be uh, maintained, and we need to get uh, a handle on all of those uh, those assets and build it yeah. into our budget so that we're maintaining them as we should. Mm -hmm. And all of that now is worked into. Um the new asset management policy. So right. like you said, every asset, not just your facilities, but every asset, but also a financial plan to be right. able to, identifying the asset isn't enough. We need a financial a plan, plan of to be how able we're to going to, it, to do how that. we're going to replace yeah, it and repair it. We have a number of, of assets and I think, you know, we sort of joke that some years it's the year of the, the parking lot, some years mm -hmm. it's the year of the roof, but, <laughs> uh, but this has been a, a really good discussion and I hope residents have been able to, to, to get some understanding of, of where we're going with, uh, with a long range financial plan. Um, I'm Mayor Margaret and this has been uh, Service uh, Georgina on Rogers TV. Thanks for joining us.